Hey, Paul here for Retro Gaming Arts, and today we're going to be talking about, yet again, another RPG. Now, this one is old school Capcom RPG, Breath of Fire 3. Breath of Fire 3 came out in 1998, which was a year after some really, really big RPGs, so I didn't actually hear about this one in 1998 because I was too busy playing other RPGs. But going back, you know, three, four, five years later after it came out and playing it again, or playing it for the first time, I'm playing it again now, playing it for the first time, it was still really sick and really good. I really liked Capcom's uh, art style. Now this one in particular was kind of a really slow start. Um, it was a very gradual RPG. It had a lot of cool things in it that like kept you playing, and the things that happened were very, like the setting was very like, cozy and at home, but like everything goes crazy and goes wild, you know, you know how RPGs are. But it was still good, even though it was a very slow start. Um, I, I'll go in, let's just go in and I'll show you what I'm talking about and I'll show you this game and I'll show you what I mean. So let's go check it out. Old school Capcom RPG. That's exactly what this is. So your Ryu is the main character, the dude with the little blue hair, and you're being chased by this dude Sunder and his brother Balio, and they chase you all the way up this mountain, and you have no option. You've been running from them for literally the first huge portion of this game. Oh, we're gonna slide down the mountain. Oh, what's this magic power? What was that magic? Oh, <gasps> a dragon? What? So yeah, you're Ryu and you're the last of a kind of race where you're half human, half dragon. You can switch between the two, sort of, but you're Ryu and you're young, so you haven't mastered it yet. It's actually a pretty cool concept for an RPG. And then traditional as an RPG, you have, you know, your battle system, and this is where becoming a dragon is incorporated into your battle system because you get gene splicing, all these different dragon genes that you can splice together to turn into a dragon and to use the dragon abilities. It's actually pretty sick with all the different combinations that you get. Love the graphics and absolutely love this artwork. Very traditional style RPG, turn-based enemies. Flame breath, ice breath. It's really cool. Dragon breath, hell yeah. We're just gonna murk on these toads. And then, you know, you meet people along the way. You meet, um, Momo over here. She just had an explosion. That's why she's yelling at you because she can't hear. And, like, this entire castle of Momo's castle, you had to find Momo. And then once you do, you get out, and there's all these little puzzles. There's puzzles all over this game, and it's pretty sick, because they're just cool little things, like walk on the patterns, but don't touch one twice, blah blah blah, whatever it may be, and you gotta figure out how to do it. Oh, yeah, yeah, kinda figured it out first try. But it's still cool, because it made you think a little bit. And then you go in the next room, and there's actually a clue on how to do this puzzle. And I tried this puzzle for a long time, and that just happened to me about 60 times in a row till I finally figured it out. And then you can cross and advance through Momo's tower and get to the top, and then you progress, just like an RPG. There's also this thing where only Nina, right here, the little blonde princess, whatever, she has a magic wand and she can strike it. The more time she strikes it, the more energy she gives it, that's why it's getting brighter which then controls how far that platform moves. So it's pretty cool to go around and do all that. Then once you do all the puzzles, you get to the top, Momo's father's rocket, whatever, whatever the storyline may be, which is, I think, that. You use it to escape from, I don't know, probably Balio and Sunder because you're just running from them forever because they're dicks. And then you escape out of it. But Momo doesn't know how to fly. And then you're back at the world map. You press start, you can make camp, and then you can like go talk to your buddies. Like, yo, look at that little dude with the broom. You can save, and then this is what an item shop looks like. Very traditional style, you know, you can buy all the different weapons, it shows you who can use what. It's just a really cool 
old school RPG if you want something different. Like if you want to play a different RPG that has a lot of character and a lot of heart to it. Like, and I think that's actually the best word to describe this is character. Like it's got the bright vivid colors, it's very in-depth and deep, and it changes. It starts very happy, very happy-go-lucky. Oh yeah, we're bandits, wah wah wah! To like deep, dark, like mean shit starts happening. So it's pretty cool. There's actually a fishing simulator in this. And it's actually done pretty good. You pick your lure, you pick your rod, and then the guy gives you little tips on how to do it. And then you fish! And listen to the chill, relaxing music. Whoa, whoa. So yeah, what would an RPG be without a fishing simulator? Oh yeah, I'm gonna catch the fish. You gotta keep the fish in line with that little bar down there. You gotta keep him intact the whole time. Oh, he's fighting. We got a feisty one. I'm gonna get him though. It's no biggie. Oh! Oh! Oh yeah! 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 Way! Way! So yeah, what would an RPG be without a fishing simulator? I mean, come on. Also, what's really cool is you meet these, uh, like, look how badass she looks. She makes you look like a little wimp. But she's like a master, and you you could be her apprentice, and you can, if you meet the qualifications to all the different masters, they will train you, and it's also another way that you can progress and grow stronger. But it's all different, like, areas that you go through, and then there's, like, these very sub style like little storylines like inside this where you meet this boss it's a whole storyline of why it's here and it's like a like a subplot but it's cool because it keeps the game alive even though it's really slow paced in which I haven't mentioned yet it's very slow paced I'm probably about like 15 hours into the game at this point and my characters still have like a hundred life yeah, let's just, let's just warp into the dragon and rape this little mutant. It's literally what it's called. Mutant. Come on, cast slow. What are you doing? I'm probably not even going to cast anything and just go straight to dragon breath. Oh, yeah. Or flame breath because he looks like he's a vegetable. So since he's a vegetable, it would probably be more subjective to flame. Which is how it is. So yeah, traditional turn-based RPG, you pick all your different abilities, then you watch the whole thing play out. Really cool animations and graphics for all of it. It's very pleasing on the eye. Yeah, 13 hours in doing 183 damage. Oh, yep, oh, of course you're not going to tell me anything. Asuna. Not Asuna, Libra. Or whatever it would be called in the Final Fantasy. So these characters that you have with you, like right now we got Nina, who's the princess, and then Momo, she's like a mad scientist. They vary. Like, you meet new people along the way, and they come and join your party. Like a traditional RPG. Sick. And then they all have their character development, they all have their own little problems. Oh yeah, look at that experience. Zenny. Zenny is their form of, uh, money. Oh, and it turns out the the mutant that you were just fighting has a heart, and now you don't want to destroy him because he has a heart. So let's look at another boss fight. This is in an arena, and you're challenged, and there's three guys that you have to fight in order to win. And then there's also these dodi which are holding up the platform, and this is like some sort of like challenge it's like a challenge in their world that happens every year it's like the ultimate fighter challenge and then little old Ryu comes in and he enters the challenge the competition and that's why I think it's called it's literally called the competition and then you have to win as Ryu 
in order to continue running away from Baleo and Sunder because they're in cahoots with the people who are running the running the show and nobody thinks little old Ryu can beat any of these any of these guys but he's half dragon so he's gonna whoop some ass after he eats his vitamins oh yeah even says you defeated a powerful enemy oh I got a claymore and here's another fight in the same um, in the same battle This is this guy is more top tier. Like this is like one of the last ones you fight. And actually, I think he sacrificed himself and made his little his little mutants grow so they can wreck you. It's a little bit of a tougher of a fight as you see Nina and Momo are done and I don't have any Phoenix downs to bring him back. So I'm just Oh, and then I I don't have any more AP, so I'm not a dragon anymore. Being a dragon fully consumes your AP. So, like, once you run out, you can't be a dragon anymore. Oh, but whoo, good thing I had that claymore. Yeah. Yeah, I just got a new rod for Nina Emitai. And then the final, Mr. Dynamite Gar. He has his own intro music. Listen to this. And then here, after you defeat Gar, Gar turns on your side, and now you're beating Balio and Sunder, finally. But Balio and Sunder have mutated into this uh, unicorn thing. And then you finally beat him with the help of Gar, which is awesome. So yeah. So Breath of Fire 3. Still a great game. It's a classic in my eyes. I mean, Capcom RPG, come on. But as I showed you, it is kind of does take a little while to like really, really get in. And it's a completely different style. So you have to like accept that and understand that like when you get into playing it. And this is something that I would definitely recommend if you had a lot of time on your hands instead of if you just wanted to play like a quick eight hour game, bang it out beat a game in a, you know, in a week, this one's going to take a little bit of a longer while. Still really worth it. I really like the art style and I just, and I really like the overall concept of the game. That's, that's what it is. So yeah, thanks for checking this out. Thanks for uh, checking us out on Twitter and watching our YouTube for Retro Gaming Arts.